It has been a long time coming, but the story of the legendary Tuskegee Airmen during World War II is finally being told in a major Hollywood motion picture on the big screen. I had a chance to talk with two of the stars of Red Tails, Academy Award winner Cuba Gooding Jr. and Academy Award nominee Terrence Howard about what it meant to be a part of this production. Take a look. Gentlemen, uh, an amazing, amazing film, uh, but give our audience on TV One's Washington Watch a sense of how difficult it was to make Red Tails and get it on the big screen. Well, we, we are blessed to have the passion and the fury that is George Lucas. He's made this his life mission to tell the story of the Tuskegee Airmen. And uh, he put his money where his mouth is. Uh, he's, he's, he's invested tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars into the production and the promotion of this movie to date. And, um, and we're here doing our part to, in support of his effort. And Terrence, when people think George Lucas, they think some of the biggest movies uh, in Hollywood history. He goes to the seven major studios, he takes this movie to him. What do they tell him? Well, they say it's a good movie, but we don't know how to market it. And he says, you market it as an action film. He says, yeah, but, you know, there's, there are no such things as black action movies. So George has, you know, has a wake-up call to, to the challenges of being African-American in this. But one of the best things that George did is instead of being stumped by that, he was like, no. This is a movie about heroes, it's not about victims, right. and I am going to stand behind it the same way I did Star Wars. And now, after putting $100 million, and if he had put his own fee on top of that, this would be a $250 million movie. This is him providing all of his services of Lucasfilms for free. So um, he's done a wonderful thing by allowing black men and women to tell the most incredible story that should light up the rest of the world and remind them of what the African American is capable of and their freedom is tied to our service and the blood that we've spilled. That's right. Is this one of uh, the toughest movies in terms of you guys hitting the road? I mean, two of you have been everywhere. It's, it's so like y'all on concert, on tour, all the tour dates y'all had in terms of going before audiences, telling folks, getting the word out, because this is going to open on the weekend, of course, of MLK's birthday in 2012. Yeah, you know, it's easy to talk about something you're proud of. I mean, that's the bottom line. I can talk, I'll continue to talk about this movie probably for the rest of my life, God willing. So um, the last thing we want is for people not to know that it had opened. So here we are in September, uh, trumpeting the horn for a film that comes out in January. And, uh, you know, we're, we're more than aggressive and excited to uh, just tell this wonderful tale. Give us a sense of what, it, what it's been like sitting there with these Tuskegee Airmen, listening to the stories, listening to the personal tales directly from them. Such historic individuals going through difficult times, been black men in the military in the middle of, of Jim Crow. Well, it's extremely humbling. And it's enlightening because you remember it's by discernment and insight and discipline. These men were extremely disciplined and they continue to show that disciplined nature. They have not left any stone unturned and any stone that's been thrown at them, they've turned it around and built a wall and a monument in which all of us are able to live. We have a foundation of excellence, as Roscoe just said. And I want to continue spreading that excellence and that road throughout the rest of humanity. And it's also fun to watch them play with each other because they've been on the set every day of filming. And uh, Billy, uh, one of the uh, uh, Tuskegee Airmen, uh, bragged about how he did with Lena Horne and then the other two were like, he's lying, he never danced with no Lena Horne. <laughs> so it's like, to hear them bicker about things like that is so enriching for our character because I mean, some of this stuff is pretty heavy material, but it is so entertaining and heroic just to be around these guys. So it's, it's been fun stuff. What has been the response from the overall military community? VFW, other folks, have, have they been? Get Open arms and inviting and, and uh, we, we just came back from the, uh, the air show in uh, Hartford, Connecticut and people just stood up and cheered at the trailer and said that they're going to do everything they can to support the movie. Last question, uh, when they showed the trailer, you jumped out of the seat because you wanted to see it. I mean, you two still are excited to see it on, on, you know, on the screen, the fight scenes, things like that. Well, this was a new trailer. We had never seen this second trailer. Right. So it's like, I wanted to be in a spot where I could see the whole thing. He's over there blocking the screen. I'm like, where is he? I can't get past him. <laughs> so we're watching this trailer like, 
I mean, like the audience, it's the first time we get to see it with the special effects. We had green screen. So now we're like little kids and Christmas is here. I saw the wrapping of the packaging. Now I want to see the present underneath and we got a little peek at it today. Well, look, it's always a pleasure. Again, folks, it opens January 20th, 2012. Want to see everybody out uh, in the movie theaters. Uh, and as both of you said, check the ticket to make sure it actually says Red Tails on it, just to be sure. January 20th, be there that weekend. That weekend is the most important weekend to establish this film as the success that it is. Red Tails is scheduled to open on January 20th. Be sure to get out there and see it right when it opens. We need to send a message to Hollywood that if they produce quality movies about the real African-American experience, we will reward them with our cash.